my name is uh, uh, Tony Bedelov, and I'm a professor at, uh, uh, in clinical research division at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center and the University of Washington. Uh, I'm a physician scientist, and my field of research can be the best described as epigenetics. Specifically, my lab has been devising strategy for a long time how to reactivate silenced genes. So Rett syndrome is uh, caused by a mutation on, uh, in the MSCP2 gene, which is located on one of the 2X chromosome in girls. However, in, in Rett syndrome, because of X chromosome inactivation, one of the two X chromosomes get, uh, 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 get inactivated. And you can think of, of, a, of a brain or a whole body of girls with Rett syndrome as being a mosaic where some cells have uh, uh, express wild type copy, normal copy of MSCP2, and the other cells don't have a functional copy of MSCP2. The good news is that every cell that doesn't express normal copy of MSCP2 has it in its genome, which is just uh, silenced uh, during development. Our broad goal is to just awaken one of these, uh, this wild type copy of MSCP2 and uh, thereby bring up therapeutic benefit. The ultimate goal of the project is to, is to devise uh, uh, therapeutic agents that can be delivered, uh, that can be delivered to patients with Rett syndrome uh, and reactivate silent copy of MSCP2 and uh, bring therapeutic benefit. And what we are working on right now is uh, we have discovered that to reactivate MSCP2, one of the key, uh, key modifications on, of MSCP2 on silent uh, X chromosome is DNA methylation. And this is why we are, uh, the lab is focused uh, uh, on delivering agents that can change the methylation status uh, 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 of the MSCP2 gene. And over the past, uh, uh, 10 years, there has been a proliferation of these epigenetic editors that can be precisely delivered to precise sites in the genome that we want to bring them in. And our goal is to, to bring one of these epigenetic editors called uh, TET1, which demethylates DNA specifically to MSCP2 gene and thereby reactivate it. One, of, one benefit of this approach is that you wouldn't affect activation of the gene that is already active. So you would really be able to specifically activate the silence copy of the gene. Uh, so, so this is the technology where uh, CRISPR technology is used, except the activity of CRISPR, which is to cut off DNA, is inactivated. So this is much gentler way of handling, uh, 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 of handling DNA uh, compared to uh, CRISPR-mediated DNA editing, which make double-strand breaks. We are just using this strategy to deliver a protein of interest, in our case, is DNA methyltransferase to a specific location on the gene. And we are now, uh, we now realize that uh, the reactivation that we can get with the current means is, uh, uh, is sufficient to get some therapeutic benefit in mouse models, and our goal is to boost up this level of reactivation. Yes, yeah, so I, I think this is one of the of the strengths of, of uh, and one of the benefits of working with RSRT is they have they have really big strength of being people together that with a, with a common interest, and so so my project is collaboration be, between the Kyle uh, Pink's lab at UC Davis and Sean uh, Leo's lab at uh, Columbia University, and each of us uh, brings up a specific set of expertises. My lab has been involved uh, in a long time in de developing valuable mouse models where we can precisely measure the level of reactivation. We have also designed a mouse model where we get complete skew of inactivation. So this female heterozygous female mouse have uh, a severe phenotype. And so we can use these models now to measure not only reactivation level, but also therapeutic benefit. So this is what my lab brings. Shaw Labs uh, 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 
bring uh, uh, the expertise in epigenetic manipulations of human neurons. And uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle has expertise in both epigenetics and uh, therapeutics uh, when it comes to agents that have to be delivered to the brain. So I think this is an ideal uh, 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 setup because it is difficult to keep, to keep pace on all three branches. So this, the, this, the way that we have delivered the work really allowed us to propel the project forward much more rapidly. CRISPR technology has taken everybody by surprise with, with the ease and, and the speed and opportunities that it can deliver. So delivering epigenetic editors at specific areas of interest has been a major breakthrough. So one of the biggest challenges is uh, achieving a high enough level of reactivation. We know now using the mouse model that we have developed in my lab, we know that even a small level of reactivation even if you reactivate it in few percent of neurons, you already have measurable benefits in the outcome. And I think that our, our challenge will be to, to raise the level of reactivation uh, to the point that it can be that, uh, that it will uh, uh, derive that it will derive the benefit. And I think we are getting closer to that point every day. I would like to tell them that, that they are not alone. There is a community of scientists that are really diligently working every day toward the common goal of, of uh, making a difference and bringing uh, therapeutics uh, uh, in, in the near future. I think that for, for patients, uh, for, for, for families, you know, the progress is slow and, and but we are always, my lab is always doing experiments every day. We are coming to do some experiment that is really pushing the boundaries and trying to get the reactivation level up. And uh, so really that keeps me going and, and designing, devising strategies how to make things better. Mm -hmm.